get this big objective setup, to get this big amount of disruption, to allow someone like Shanji, to allow someone like Cream to really just infiltrate the back line and make their whole life a mess. And then again, we see the Maokai come out. There's a hell of a lot of damage. We know what the uh, the likes of Tarzan can do Blind when he's given fits? a challenge. Blind cast it in before anything else was picked. Uh, I mean, okay. it's, 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 a, it's a move. I get that LPL <laughs> likes casting in. We have had this a couple of times before. Um, and I believe Cream, I'm trying to remember if it was Cream that was the guy that got like the nine kill crazy game on the on the uh, the casting. We've seen it blind picked a couple of times, but this is asking for trouble. I have been trying to theorycraft a couple of casting encounters. Sadly, Dernby not playing in this split. Cled mid is awesome into casting in. We have seen stuff like Yone be an answer into it too, which of course both of these players do play. But you're looking for something that can really punish through the mid jungle now. And the problem with that, and I do understand this, why it's, the castle is locked in from this perspective, is that Maokai is not a great do aggressive it. early jungler. Do Later it. on, he can very much find some angles. I'm not holding out hope uh, for Zed. I would love to see Zed back in pro play, but he's just not in a great space as a champion right now. My second most champion played champion of all time. Yes, we can talk about this as well. Before this series, this uh, this champion, Abel Samira, 100% ban rate against this player. Nine and three all time, has been absolutely wrecking face with the champion, Abel Samira on the table. I'm really looking forward to this now. Get themselves a hell of a lot of damage. There's a lot of short range of both these comps so far. I love They're... this draft, man. This is so much to talk about. I was just about to say, I love the fact that OMG are saying, cool, we picked the Samira for Abel. We know how good he is. We also know how close range our composition is. We're banning the Renata. We're going to ban the Rel. Oh my God, these bans have gone so off the wall yeah, right now. These Samira are not comps. Rel. Yeah, Samira Rel is like the key composition, key laning partner for that Samira because you get to have that double stun all in, all the way from like level one, level two, and it just allows Samira to do so much work in team fights as well with the, the track repel, allowing uh, Samira to dive in and have even more tankiness. By the way, this is not going to be the last we see of this champion. As soon as we get the B patch coming through for this, of course we're on 13.1 right now, Samira with Infinity Edge second slaps so, so hard. Uh, we can see that OMG banning out some of the more defensive lane partners, something that that Varus diving into a Brawl, not particularly fun. Diving into a Renata, also not particularly fun. But what are you going to pair this up with now? You're losing a lot of your premier engaged supports. PP God, known for his uh, stuff like his Leona, going to lock in that Alistair. But LNG, I think they should be looking for an anti dive support. This hover, this would be pretty okay for them. I mean, the Alice are locked in. We're going back to 2021, 2022. I'm excited <laughs> to see these champions come in. Screw your enchanters. Give me hard engage. Absolutely in that bot side. Ash and Heimerdinger weren't even banned. They're just not even looked at. That's the beauty of the LPL as we come into this one here. As LNG and OMG are kind of realizing that the laning phase doesn't make that big of a difference in terms of this specific matchup. Obviously, it does in the, in the grand scheme of League of Legends, but they're realizing as we go through this series, it's about the team fights. It's about being comfortable and moving forward. Dicka looking like he's going to go back towards the Renekton. I'm going to be real with you. With the Cassante still up and available, I really don't like this blind because it just felt like he just didn't so, do anything. In the 1v1 matchup, totally agree with you, Sheen. In the team fights, though, I love this. Now, if this is going to be something like a Prowler's Call or an Ecton, Samira now has to deal with point and click Maokai stun, point and click Leona stun, point and click potentially into death, Renekton stun with that W as well. Abel, despite this being probably his most um, signature champion, the one which he has got such good results on before and has managed to be banned away from him so much in this year too, is going to have a very difficult job team fighting in this. Same with the Kassadin, but what I will say about the OMG composition right now is that even though the Kassadin and the Samira have a lot of point and click CC to have to navigate, Wukong does a lot of damage. Cassante does a lot of damage. There are multiple damage threats outside of the traditional carry positions too, which means that LNG, they have the tools to deal with someone if they dive in alone. Can they do that if everyone manages to coordinate up once from us? Just gotta play those scrims out even if they're just so crap early. We were joking about it with like, yeah, what happens if you have a scrim where you let Why Abel get his Samira? He well, he's got it now. And this isn't a scrim. This is on stage. Now, you do have a chance to give him a a rare loss on the champion, 9-3 and three on his career all-time. Grouping up level 1 to maybe try and catch them up, but not finding anything in these murky waters down towards that bot lane. And Vision put onto the red buff by PP God. Going to be able to see Tarzan and uh, 
which Buffy is going to start on at the very least, or at least side, one, which side of the map. I am so ready for this game. We have the on-hit Varus as well. You were talking about uh, how low-range compositions these can be. We can even have Justana jumping into uh, a bit of the Malphite ult. Please don't do this game. It's awful to do it, but this should be an absolute massacre right from the beginning of the game. I love the fact that we're seeing as well from both LNG and OMG the in the importance of information. Two sweepers on OMG, one with the support and one with the jungler, and obviously the one sweeper with the uh, with the support on the side of LNG. So both teams recognizing, and even now Scout kind of putting down a ward saying, look, we need to know where these junglers are going. We need to know what is going to be happening in the first few minutes of this game so we don't get caught out that's typical that that ward there by scout has kind of been colloquially known as the fake award because he's been doing it for so many years at this oh, point he just walks in level one and gives you vision of that uh that raptor pit the scout doing it himself many mid laners now playing that themselves get the triple lane view and honestly i don't blame them fights could happen anywhere at any time in this game yeah as soon as we got the triple lane view we actually looked on bot side it was uh Hung and PP God throwing out some CC between the two of them. And of course, level two is where you're really looking at the Leona and Lalister where they get their full combination or their so, full palette. Yeah, slight, uh, just really want to cut in here because this is really important. This is Q start level one of the Tristana. It means that you're not infinitely pushing the wave level one. We used to see this ages ago when it was way more important than stuff like lane swaps to hold the wave at a certain point. What this means is that you're not crashing the lane level two into the Cassidy to allow him to pick up all of this uh, wave at tower. It means you can just walk up, use the lethal tempo and that attack speed to take trades like this. You don't actually have to worry so much about pushing the wave infinitely. You can stack it up on a cannon wave instead and make it much harder for the Cassidy to get value out of these early waves. I like that adaptation from Scout in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, even if he does pick up all the minions and all that, it, it takes an awful lot longer to kill that cannon on the tower than it does anything else. You give yourself an opportunity to roam, maybe try and combo up with your jungler, like so, and they're going to try Try and maybe make this dive work. They jump straight exactly on top. Scout, why. though, is tanking. He needs one more auto attack to die. You can see Cream. Oh, Hong! Doesn't matter. He got over the line, but he got a level of burst. First blood goes over to LNG. It was most certainly not clean, but it definitely worked out. But all of that is a setup from Scout, making sure it's a slow push on the wave, not using the explosive charge there and the passive to levels up the Q level one, takes some hard trade, sets up for the dive. Love the adaptation, love the capitalization. LNG off to a good start in this game. Gonna go back to the replay to see how this happened and uh, the almost comedy of errors because what happens there is Tarzan kind of flips Cream out of the out of the jump with the Q, means that you don't <laughs> actually get that. <laughs> That was the start points. They will see, in fact, that the Hex Flash is available, so they absolutely know that he flashed at some point. They don't necessarily know how bad it was, but information up to him, she nonetheless. And this is uh, unfortunate uh, for OMG, because again, like you said, LNG could have ended up losing maybe one or two people there, because uh, the level up came in and whatnot, but was not to be. Now Tara's out on this bot side. They're gonna try and maybe catch out PP God. As an Ignite goes in, they're gonna knock him up and force the flash out of him, but he gets knocked in here. Bramble Smash not quite available to knock him back, which means they're not able to secure that kill, but getting the flash off of PP God still pretty good. You do lose your Ignite onto the Leona. This bot lane is going in and oh, Nymera, we're just getting fights. This is League of yeah. Legends. This is what I wanted. I Look at this, this 35, 40 minute. I'm going to get <laughs> Heimerdinger Ash bot lane. Get it out of my game. Get it out of here. I just want to see fights. Just bring back engage supports. It's more entertaining. <laughs> bring back Ari. I want my champion back. They fight all the time too, but Scout, very happy to do that in this mid lane. I've got a mid lane freeze coming up. Um, Got the hack slash on both of these supports. That's also very important to know. When you're playing around stuff like Yubi and Nami, you're not used to seeing stuff like hack slash anymore. That can be a very important thing to keep track of, being able to flash out of a brush, flash over a wall, much like Kong kind of failed to do earlier, and force the tempo of this game to go even further forward. Try and force a response from the enemy team. That's kind of like that. Going back to this word tempo, right? It's about forcing a response from the enemy team. Just being off the board, having the tools to fight, the threat of being able to fight, sometimes more important than actually fighting itself. Able using that blade well to keep himself safe in that bot lane. And again, Alistair now on the roam, going about into that fog of war. We're really seeing a different style of League of Legends than we have seen for the last split and a half. Now we wait to see where the next real kind of play is going to come in. Looks like Scout's looking for something in that mid lane. He wants Cream, I imagine, to use. Yeah, I was going to say he wants it to... Oh, he got level 6, but not quite able to put him into the 
Arms are hung, who wasn't quite in position to capitalize. I can see the idea there was to knock him back, get the CC down, kill him before he hits level 6 and gets the rip walk. So I like the idea. Doesn't come to fruition. But look, you, I always say with this, you miss all the shots you don't take. You miss some of the ones you do take, though. And that you miss one a lot is... of them, but if you don't take them, you're always going to miss them. But in this kind of game, when you've got the Kasten who is actually getting up to level 6 on this wave now, um, that would be very important to track. Green gets the slow, PP God doesn't have the flash. None of these supports have their flash to follow up with these players. They've used them very liberally in this game, but only the one kill on the board. It, the fighting has been there, but again, it's not actually led to huge kills, huge gold leads just yet. It feels like, once again, we've had this a couple of times today, that uh, building tied behind the dam, the storm off in the horizon, just ready to start opening the skies to absolute bloodshed. Yeah, I think it's just a, it's a boiling point, really. We're getting there, and if you don't, uh, don't turn down the heat, eventually it will fizzle over, and you will have to clean up that mess. But depending on who's cleaning up that mess, is yet to be decided. Level 6 is going to be picked up here by the virus, so we should see uh, later than normal in this particular game, as Shanji is taking the 1v1. Now, I talked about this in the champ select. It's uh, definitely not been Zika who's been coming out of this one on top, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Flash, flash, burned! And that's going to be kill going over to Shanji on this Cassante. And again and again, we're seeing it time and time. I have no issue with the redaction, but I also have a problem with the 1v1. It's just, it's just going to be a yeah. bad time. Okay, well, I'm going to play the other side of the coin then. It's Green getting a good trade here. Going to use the spell with Ignite, but... There is a Herald coming up in 30 seconds. You have the Dragon already down for LNG. You have won that 2v1, that 1v1 on the top side between the Renex and the, the Cassante. You don't have your Flashes, and you don't have that uh, ultimate from the Cassante as well for a potential Herald fight. It looks good for now. Really want to see what happens with that Herald in regards to rotations, whether these teams will fight over it, to see whether this actually wins out in the long run. Because if you don't have Cassante able to fight like this around the big objective, this is only a feel-good moment. Really need to see what's happening right now has stopped like that non-trivial actually if Varus is going to recall the help towards that top side that could have been a big factor towards this herald play could have would have should have but uh, it was not to be we did see a lot of plates going over to scout so he's fairly happy in this mid lane right now 10 cs or so up tarzan now being a nuisance in around this barren pit as uh, shelly makes her temporary home uh, around that side but with the pressure now being in favor of omg on the bot side it means they are going to be able to get the rotation off quicker than lng will so it's gonna be a 5v4 in favor of omg they are going to use the maokai ultimate here the and they're going to try and collapse here onto shanji but it's shanji he's really really tanky so doesn't have that much of a problem here hong forced the flash that's his real flash not his hex one and they haven't brought up the virus just yet they're not going to make this a 5v5 they're just going to try and poke them out make them pay as much as they possibly can. We see a little bit of a hop and skip and a trade there. TP going to be coming out here from Cream to make sure that they don't lose too much on that bottom side. But again, LNG just trying to make ONG work for what they're getting. That is, however, I mean, we were talking about how important that Herald fight was in regards to you won that top side play, but because you used your ultimates, does that matter towards the Herald? Turns out, no, LNG can't punish, and that stomp in bot lane very, very important. Does turn out to be a big factor. Will it be the factor that determines this game when you have such low range snowball compositions? Worth tracking either way. Now, Shanji, under this turret, has Wukong in the wings. Potential of another kill onto this Renekton should they wish to go towards it. But Harold in pocket. OMG, really with the advantage at this point. They haven't managed to shut Cream out of the game. They haven't managed to completely snowball this game away from. OMG, and I'm getting a little bit worried now. I think OMG, uh, they get themselves into a decent point in this game. And you gotta be worried for Zika here. He'll be able to slice and dice and get himself away. He's playing very defensive now after getting that death. I will say, with only 10 minutes on the board, you've nearly got full plates here in the mid lane. It is kind of part and parcel with the Tristana, but of course, taking the demolished proc definitely helps with that uh, pushing power. And now with that happening, you can see that the reset has to come in for Cream, so not really feeling confident to make this one work for himself. The Blade Whirl is good for an auto attack. You don't want to be using that too liberally. Uh, so Tarzan just uses a priority in mid and bot to now push forward. There's a lot of plates now going over in favor of LNG. They're getting a gold lead purely off of just having priority in these lanes. Yeah, seeing if they can do anything under this turret. I don't think they okay. can. Barasalt though is going to be a good amount of poke. It's not going to lead to anything like a dive threat. Cream still have to collect this wave, you've got to fill into this turret, so 
Yeah, let's check in on that. Got some individual gold leads coming through. PP God, but they're not quite nice. cancel that jump. Just under buff was out of it. Of course, uh, the way that League of Legends works, the most recent movement ability cast um, is the one that takes effect. So if you, because there's a delay between casting the W and then it jumping, of course, it ends up buffering out of it. So not quite getting the timing there for PP God. It's kind of hard to get it either way, but OMG. I think they're still happy for now. Even though they're behind in a couple of plates, they have themselves that Harold to use. They have themselves an ability to snowball through things, and this casted in will come online at some point. This Samir only really needs one fight to determine the game. LNG, not in the position just yet to be overwhelming favorites when that fight comes. Have been seeing some big fights, but uh, like I said, not the bloodiest affairs. It seemed to be kind of everyone just happy to kind of get themselves scaled up a little bit more. A lot less uh, kills than I hoped and anticipated coming into this game. Yeah, but you and me both. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a little, I'm a little sad in that regard. But nevertheless, we do have first items coming in. Night Harvester coming out here for Tarzan. It ah. seems to be the, the current build right now because obviously we are still playing on 13.1. We have not received the hotfixes or nerfs to the Maokai AP. So we are still looking at an incredibly dangerous yeah. AP threat in that jungle. And also, this is a... So, I was expecting an AP build. You saw the... You see the first dragon of Maokai, you expect that to be there. My answer does a decent amount of poke from this. Um, it just means that you can be a little longer range in a very short range game. You just litter those bushes with uh, those minefields. Gold going over to Aki yeah. with that. Hatch cream, you did not want to take it that far, I don't think. I mean, does he? Because they're going to be able to CC him down. He can't move! He literally was CC'd for the entirety of that setup it's just ridiculous what you can do when you land that constant cc and now you're without a cast and then you're trying to go towards this dragon you can't fight it yeah fair play i mean the engage range is good lmg being able to follow up even though the leota flies all the way over the board able not there to uh assist things either omg caught a little bit out of position fighting around mid lane without everyone in position to respond Gonna lose a second dragon for that. Mountain dragon stats, very much gonna be appreciated by the side of LNG and particularly appreciated by Hung and Zika. It's gonna be an ocean rift. And when you have champions like uh, Renekton and Cassante in this game, of course these tank supports as well, Ocean Soul does get a lot of value. So LNG weren't necessarily ahead enough of the curve for my liking a little earlier into the game, getting the double dragon stack, getting the first turret in that mid lane, getting the plates attached to that too, puts them in much better stead. The question is now, how are they going to allocate those lanes? We got that mid lane turret down, those plates around the map have largely gone in your favor, but where do you go next? How do you not stall? How do you not stop out? And how do you stop OMG reaching those very dangerous item break points? Well, hopefully they have the answers to those questions that you've just asked. Scout picking up a hell of a lot of gold there in the mid lane. Got himself all the plates and, of course, the first tower of blood as well. The first brick. As we move towards this bot side, and plates should be leaving now. And that should just basically mean that this tower is pretty damn easy for LNG to pick up on. So another little influx of gold going to be created for them on the same. It is an ocean soul again. So... So decent p power and presence in that particular one. If you can see Scout trying to go for this one here, but he's already lost his support. They're going to have Shanji coming in. Nicely used there to try and just dissuade everybody. Good Maokai ultimate stops any kind of follow-up whatsoever. And that means that, yes, you have four people bot lane, but you're not going to get anything out. Okay, teleport take away from OMG. Maybe feeling the pressure of falling behind the pace of the game a little bit. LP still stationed in this mid lane. No punish coming through for that. And OMG, big teleport taken away from this Cassante. Um, allows Renekton to go towards his top side. Double teleport onto the Cassidy now. Yeah, flash burn, because he's uh, two levels down on Zika. That would have been a dead boy. He didn't want to use his stopwatch this early on after he just got his Rod of Ages. But uh, that's a tower for tower in the bot, traded for the top. But you've also lost a summoner here on Cream, who no longer has his flash. We talked about the CC chain last time. Got to be very aware of that this time around. They don't want to use the Sword of Flare just yet. You want to use it as he's got the CC down. Good disengage, though, coming in for PP God. Means that OMG Cream shall fight another day. Yeah, Shanji's still on this bot lane. So I was wondering what was going to happen with this big cross map kind of play between turrets. Because typically cross mapping against the Tristana means you lose out on turrets. Very, very good demolitionist. However, this is the side of the map with the Herald on it. So despite getting some damage onto that inner turret, which LNG didn't match on that top lane inner turret for OMG, they are going to get themselves towards this Herald. And 
The Maokai saplings with that Night Harvester and the Sword Boots on top of it, it does mean that uh, RNG gonna walk away with the second Herald of the game. Get themselves that on the board for a potential inner turret push at some point. Gotta imagine that that bot lane outer is gonna be down for all by itself. Cream caught outside of this uh, racket from the top yeah. of the tower. You get the reset, you will have the Rift Rock over the wall, but there's Tarzan. Tarzan collects that kill. Very happy with that one there. And this is just capitalizing on the fact that, cool, we burned the flash. We know that he hasn't got it, so now we burned the stopwatch. Okay, and this is an important series of plays. We were asking whether LNG could stop things from stalling out, and they managed to get a Herald, they managed to get that cross map, and they managed to get a kill onto the casting in as well, despite them having an okay amount of CS for that casting, and only down 30 in a Tristar matchup. I call that pretty even for that matchup. LNG still managing now to stop OMG getting all the resources that they need. Comes through the revision first and foremost. The scout, not afraid to jump forward, understands the damage calculations very much in his favor at first. And with a little help from Tarzan, cleans up the rest of this kill. Kill goes over to Tarzan, not over to Tristana, but of course when you have a Maokai who's doing a lot of damage with his saplings, a little bit of extra gold goes a long way. It really does. You're no longer the sole calorie in mid lane. This Maokai is going to be building so, so much. And it's curious as well, from our first series of the day, the Vi being such an important pick between BLG and Team WE. Now we're looking at the Maokai having the same level of effect, and it does feel like the AP junglers are here to stay for the moment, at least in the in the LPL, with the patch 13.1 being stuck on for the next week or so. But we'll wait to see now what they're able to kind of do with it. Kasante does have two items, which we puts them at a pretty decent power spike right now. We are going to see this next dragon spawn in 30 seconds. Both teams would really like to try and get this one going, but I will say, without a stopwatch, without a flash, Cream has to be very careful where he's engaged. He does have level 11, but he's up on that top side. I'll be wondering if you could catch out Abel just with the slow, threaten something more potentially in that mid lane, but not able to on that Varus. Item completions, we've got that Crackle Slayer, saw that used by Scout a little earlier. Actually, it looks like Scout is going for the Blood First to second with the BF Sword and the Crit Cloak. Of course, you can't go towards the Infinity Edge second on this well, you patch. You can, yeah. really bad. Okay, you can, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unless you're going to go for like the Infedge into a couple of Crit Cloaks afterwards, do the GP build, and just not have that, pa uh, that power spike for a minute or two. But still, Tristana, very big point of power right now. Lots of raw AD, lots of ability to kind of chunk through these members if things go fast enough. Shanji, though, on two items on that Cassante. Saw how much that could help in that last game from Shanji, the MVP of that second game. Ooh. Herald, the counterweight in mid lane. Now Kyle coming through. I mean, PB God has to use his unbreakable, but how unbreakable is he? Because he's just being cc down the flash in from Aki to get the Cyclone off. They will take out PB God, but you've used a lot of resources. Now, can you kill off anyone else? The Tristana is dead. Aki will be traded back. Shanji trying to go up against the Immortal Shield, but with this virus, Cream cannot escape. Abel's going to be forced to flash and cleanse, you would imagine. Nope, just a cleanse, and he should be fine. But it's all LNG all the time. They put themselves on the sole point. They even got the turret in mid lane because they dropped down Shelly before it all went down. Why the hell are you fighting without your Samira? That was a 4v5. That was a winnable fight. If Abel is there, this is his key champion, his unique champion, the one which he plays so much when he's allowed to do so. I get you're trying to respond to this, Maoko. I understand this. This is fine. Lose the, 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 the Alistair ult. You can just about deal with that. But as soon as you see this combo go in, Aki, Cream, this is so much of an overtime. If this is on top of a Samira being in this play, I can see this being a one play. It's not. And in the first big bloody fight of this game three, where OMG could have struck up the table, punched up against LNG, they completely fumble it because their AD carry is not at the play. Yeah, and it just felt like one of those moments where they, they saw the three-man Cyclone, they really wanted to make it work, but like you said, you know, you don't have the Samir and you don't bigger have than the their damage. Stomach, shall we say. Yes, yes, best way to put it there. But now 6,000 gold lead, three dragons, four and a half minutes, you got to fight at this dragon soul. And I don't think you're going to hit level 16 on cream by that time. So you're not going to be having that super powerful spike in the Cassadin until then. You're behind on items in the AD carry. Yes, the Samira can still do work, but it's going to be difficult. And I think for uh, OMG, they need to just try and utilize this Cassante. Maybe try and isolate someone out so that they can get these favorable fights. Yeah, you're on pick duty now. But 
You're doing pick duty against a, uh, against a Maokai, who's going to be littering effectively pseudo wards, which do damage to you across the entirety of the map. It is so difficult now for them to approach. Maybe you get gifted a bit of a Miracle Baron fight. We saw that uh, a little earlier in the day when we saw, well, game one of the series, in fact, where LNG tried to play off the Elder and the Baron spawn and try and uh, have the cake and eat it. They ended up having a Baron steal against them. Things got a little bit rocky for a little while, but OMG, they're waiting for that kind of moment now. This game is, I'm not going to say out of their own hands because, of course, they have to execute in their own right, but it feels like they are very much passengers in this game. They are looking for openings, they're looking for mistakes, and against a champion like Maokai, they're so difficult to do. Maokai okay, is busted, <laughs> and on this patch, he is king. I, so. We are agreed on this. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? We don't find a lot to agree on, but when we do, it's Maokai being busted. Has a demonic embrace now. It's just going to shred through health bars. One sapling will probably do, I don't know, maybe a quarter, maybe yep. a little bit more of a health bar of someone like Abel and such. So you're really going to struggle to try and gain control around this area. You can see that the OMG is trying to throw down. They're only ever throwing down a ward at the back of Baron Pit. And then they're just kind of saying like, oh, we got a ward, it's fine. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at it from a point of view. It's like, you're not gaining any forward vision. You're just about keeping your vision on the Baron to make sure you don't lose it off of like a, a silly play. So right now it's all LNG and OMG. They're gonna have to find themselves an opportunity because it's just their, yeah. their, their window is closing. Feels like they're bleeding out because they're losing side lanes, getting pushed in there. They are going to lose their teleports to a Baron start at some point, you have to imagine. Uh, top lane's getting hard pushed in by the Tristana, very hard for Tristana not to push at this point of the game. Renex and similarly, Zika doing very well at controlling this bot wave. He has his own teleport. OMG, they are not the ones in control of this game. They, are have, they have to sit here and just respond to LNG, choking them out of vision, moving them out of their own jungle. They're losing access to their jungle camps. They're losing access to minion waves when they respond to group members of LNG. This is going to be a very difficult sort of game for them to try and find openings in because they have to try and hit back against this full court press. The siege can begin. Cream with TP down the bot side is answering Zika. As the rest of OMG try to just survive on this top side of the map. A lot of summoners, if not all available, you're still missing the flash and uh, flashes from Aki and Shanji. But I was going to say, you have two AD carries and a full AP Maokai. You could shred this if you really wanted to. Scout starts it off with get the Teleport coming out there from Cream. That's one already down. Not going to gain a lot from that Maokai ultimate. But at the end of it all, they get the summoner, they get themselves pressure, and they can go back to their merry setups. Exactly, they get that teleport out. That is another person who cannot answer the bot wave. Cream even switches over to the Spellbook Smite to see if they can get into the pit for a miracle steal of some kind. And even if LNG don't pull off multiple Baron Baits, you're now in a position where you're not going to be able to respond to every lane on the map as OMG. What that means is that you're losing minions somewhere, you're losing a tower somewhere because you can't defend all of these waves. OMG are trying to break that pressure now by grouping mid, forcing LNG to come to them. They have a wave in the advantage and they don't have to worry about that Maokai ult. They found a window to do something but they're at the risk of being engaged on. They are being a little bit engaged upon them. They Han thought it was maybe something there that wasn't. But TP's going to be coming in on the blank of this one here. That's Zika. But again, you don't really have the follow-up there. You would love a Maokai ultimate, try and create some disarray. But they're going to try and turn it into an opportunity. Say, cool, you take a tier one, we'll take a tier two. Because we still have a Tristana. who's rocking out that two and a half item bill. Going towards that Infinity Edge. And LNG going to have full priority over this dragon. And six seconds that spawns. That one flank ward in the Raptor Pit is basically your only hope now as, as OMG. Yeah, this is really looking dire for OMG. Is. They thought they could try and force LNG to come to them in the mid lane, but the soul is up. They don't have control of this bot side of the map. Melting. They have to engage into enemy territory. Here we go. Oh! oh! Cream! He made me zero and four, but he gets himself the steal. No soul for you. Shanji needs to back himself away. Han goes straight in on top of this one here. Scale has to use the open to try and keep himself alive, but it's not going to do him any good. OMG find themselves in a really strong position. LP goes down as well. The There's the X rank. And Abel's trying to make this one work for him. He gets flashed on and hit down, but it's still doing the damage. OMG out of nowhere. Find four. It is the miracle fight for OMG, and it is on the back of a Spellbook Smite steal to stop the soul going to LNG, and of course, this 
Dagger in the dark, this Sword of Damocles, Abel's Samira. It has banned so much against this guy. Nine and three all time. Comes into this one crucial fight at the turn of the game to deny that soul, to get gold on the board, and to get themselves a Baron. Green's gotta be a little careful. He will take a fair chunk of damage as Tarzan slowly makes his way towards the pit. Don't think he's gonna really get in position here. He actually smites Cream to make it a little bit more awkward on him. Abel, no mana, so needs to be very careful here about how he's gonna be able to try and get away. There's the Maokai Ultimate trying to make something useful here. Shanji <laughs> does end up actually getting taken out, and he's still going. This is Tarzan on a one-man mission saying, look, I was the carry, I was the one you needed to get away. Oh my lord, it looked like he got to kill the Zayden carry, but he did not. And they end up getting one more. Never mind, Aki. Oh my god, I got baited by the decoy. That's how good of a decoy it is. But now you've got the Baron, but you've lost two members. And you don't have a pressure in mid. This is going to be so hard to defend this inhibitor. Yeah, that is a crazy clutch play from Tarzan. He didn't actually end up going for the Baron Steel. Went for the cleanup duty. We talked about this being an AP Maokai. Yeah, that might be nerfed in a couple of patches. Not right now. And OMG is very lucky to get Abel out of that alive. If you lost that Samira at that point, it would have been disastrous. As it stands, they've already managed to deny the Baron power play. Abel has three items now. Next time you fight that Samira, things are going to get very dicey indeed. But LNG recover what was supposed to be a miracle play for OMG. You can have to see how that came out to be. But at the start of this, Cream gets the spell of a slide. We talked about that before the last Baron start. Didn't think it'd be coming into play around this one because OMG had to very quickly move from that mid lane push into this Baron. But as soon as that happens, because of the way that OMG approached it, going through the enemy jungle, switching sides of the map, it means that actually LNG don't have a great way to fight front to back. The Baron doesn't have a way out of this fight. As soon as the Wukong gets on top of the Tristana, they're in trouble too. And this broken mess of the fight allows Abel on the Samira to clean up house. Absolute credit to OMG to puzzle their way out of a very difficult game state into an incredible play, all things said and done, despite it not ending as cleanly as it could have been. Well, I will say the Baron Power play is at a minus thousand right now, so it's uh, not ideal, not okay, ideal but Think whatsoever. about this, right? If you had given up Soul and the Baron yourself, that's still oh, yeah, a positive over. on that. <laughs> <laughs> We get, there's always a positive outlook on live as now Cream has hit level 16, is nearly stacked up on that Archangels, is going to be able to build himself a hell of a lot of damage and just kind of become a nuisance. Once he gets that Zonya's finished up, this is going to become a lot harder now for the Tristana to really deal with in that side lane. So we wait and see what they're able to kind of work with. It. 30 seconds left on that Baron buff means they're not going to get anything else out of it. They're going to clear out a couple of ways. After that, nothing else. Next minute, though, is going to be the Dragon Soul again. Do you have another cat, a rabbit in the hat? Do you know they have a cat to take out of the bag? Because you're going to need it as OMG as Cream was a savior last time, but this time around, he's not going to have access to that sneaky smite. Yeah, and this time, OMG don't have the mid push to kind of go through territory which wasn't littered with Maokai saplings. We've seen a sorcery elixir picked up on the Maokai, extra damage, extra temporary AP. That's very important. Maybe if that does hit enable, he can't pull off that same, same kind of play again. Same with someone like Aki. OMG in a very difficult spot. They're grouping, trying to force LNG to be very wary of being picked off. Particularly a flash combo could turn things from the Alistair. But LNG not giving any intro, easy intros into this river. They're trying to force OMG to go through these bushes, through these saplings, but OMG aren't fighting just yet. Here we go. We're going to see possibly an elixir picked up here for Scout. Actually goes back and picks up a stopwatch. So having anything extra to help the him with this well, fight. Cool on that. Yeah, oh, no, that's actually split, though, so it's actually not just that, but still, <laughs> immediate, pa immediate power being valued. That's the main thing. OMG trying to get this mid push as well. Cream once again on the flank, picked up that ghost from the spell, but a little bit extra mobility. Yo. Zika, though, also hiding in the shadows. Soul confirmed. OMG not really in a position to go for this one. The Blade World does stop the ensuing. Ooh, that's a nice ultimate from the Leona that slows everybody down. The Cassante has to flash away, hasn't really been able to do anything right now. Cream goes in, Cream finds his 
Mark. They traded Tristana though for the Cassante. You will not be able to get this virus out alive. OMG, they're doing it. The Samira's going mad, but so is Tarzan. Tarzan is huge right now. How is he doing so much damage? This is ridiculous. Go, little sapling. Show me what you can do. But now Abel very much running away because he is being chased and hunted. That was a triple kill for Tarzan. That is one scary tree. Tarzan picks up the sorcery elixir for the immediate power and gets immediate rewards. Zika as well gets right into the middle of things. Burns up that GA, but what a good use of it. They get soul, they get so much gold on the board, but it's not going to be the end of the game just yet. This fight looks really scary for a second from LNG. You don't get a great power kill. The Blade World starts that up. And you see that Abel is given a bit of time to stack up. Gets the ability to get through that S rank. The Cassidy gets onto the back line and you get resets. But it's not enough. I actually wonder if Abel took one too many wild rushes in the wrong direction. Goes into the melee range of that Renekton. And Tarzan oh God, and that Renekton smash. do so much damage. The Cold and Beak, the Bramble Smash just chunks through OMG. And they can't stand and fight what should have been a huge fight for them, but they can't quite land that punch. It was a full Morello Namacom, by the way, for Tarzan. He had a Phoenix Codex and a stopwatch before that. And I was like, oh, he's building towards a, uh, a Zanya's no problem. It's doesn't matter. Still has it. Still going good. Still keeping those items while 7-0 and 7. This is on Tarzan. It feels like right now you're looking at it's Tarzan versus Cream. It's Tarzan versus OMG because the level 17... Kassadin is online. Your Tristana is good, but the Kassadin does so much Ow. more late. Oh my god. That, uh -huh. is, that is that is one third of your health bar from yeah. one sapling. And particularly because Morel Nomicon, it gives that Grievous Wounds, and it's on the da damage over time from the Abyssal, from that Sapling Burn as well. It means that extra Grievous Wounds takes place for an extra four or five seconds, which means that actually Abel can't heal up in the moment nearly as much. And if that gets ticking over the course of the fight, that could amount to a couple of hundred HP, which can absolutely be the life and death of this game. The life and death of this series. It has been oh so close. LNG, huge advantage in terms of the gold. I'm not ready to call it out of it just yet because you have that casted on the board, because you have Abel Samira with all those potentials of resets coming through. He spotted on the side, but will escape that Mark ultimate. But there was a long wrap route coming in from LNG. Yeah, I was gonna say he's actually found. It looks like they're on opposite sides of the rip right now. It looks like OMG are the blue team and uh, LNG are the red because it's actually OMG who have a little bit of an inside track here. Luckily though for LNG, Zika was prepared and waiting. Oh, uh, PB guy goes okay. over the wall. It's only Hong though, so not really the one you want to try and be going into. And remember, there's still these saplings. Tick, tick, tick. Look at Aki loses about one sixth of his HP just from walking near the brush. These are the small little moments, the small little advantages that can make a big difference. Important to know coming into the next fight. You have a stopwatch in Aki. You do not have a GA on Zika, but stopwatches are available for Tarzan and of course for Scout. So. Big, big cooldowns or big, big as uh, actives that could be available here. Everyone's reset from OMG. I think they might have gotten caught with their pants down because they're gonna have to TP they onto have this. Been cream, cream's not quite there just yet. Maybe he has to stack up his ults, but they're trying to go. get into the pit. It's gonna be a major smite. Aki does not have flash. It's a one-way trip, but he did not make it worth it. He got caught out by a little bit of a scam on the flight, and he will be taken out. Great decision making here from LNG as Tarzan gets himself, continues to keep himself at 100% kill participation. This is so ruthless from LNG. Raid boss Tarzan making Maokai look like he's the boss fight from Ruin King, never mind the battle he is on this rift right now. Every sapling is an absolute warhead. Dropped onto OMG and now fighting without that Wukong, big source of their CC. Can they even survive this, in, uh, this siege? We'll have to wait and see. There comes the Maokai ultimate. It's going to catch out Cream, but he goes golden. Look at Scout just free hitting on the PP God. Now he gets a little bit of free time onto the tower. Not going to be able to take down the tower just yet. Seven seconds till Aki's available. Will not have Cyclone, but should have Flash up very, very soon. They will lose this inhibitor turret. You would imagine they back away. They don't want to overextend themselves, and they don't want to lose any cooldowns, especially with that GA. It's so, so close for Zika. Yeah. Once again, it's not a game-ending play. And I could see the gold advantage, but earlier in the day, we were saying, sometimes you got to ignore that gold advantage. You're still reaching full items on a lot of carries now. You're starting to get towards full items. 
on uh, a lot of these carries. Now, for now, there is another item slot available. But if this happens once or twice more, LNG's gold advantage doesn't actually do much else. It plateaus. You're not gaining any more items after you filled up your inventory space. And OMG, they have a lot of carries which do very, very Elder. well when they're at those uh, full items. They do have an Elder, though, which might cut that dream just a little short. OMG, they do have the damage if they land it in the right place, but if it does go a little longer, these saplings will start to rule the fight once again. We have all 10 champions in the same place. Watch for the value of these big melee fighters. Can you catch out an Abel? Can you catch out a Tarzan or a Scout before it. they really start to do so much damage? This could be it. Sanji taking a hell of a lot of damage. Solar Flare goes a little wide right there. Cream off to the top side. They're going to drop down the Maokai ultimate to make sure that nobody gets engaged upon. Dragon has been started. Aki to the backside has Flash, has Smite, and has himself a decoy as well. They know that he's roughly around here, and they don't want to try and flip this. Dominus was popped, and Dominus doesn't get a lot done. PP got down to below half HP. Cream looking for a flank, but he shall be spotted. These saplings are tickling down the health bars. These saplings are doing work. Aki finds himself in the pit. The dragon's still not taken out just yet. PP got popped his ultimate. Doesn't really get much else. Here we go. Aki. Flash in. And they're going to get the S rank going as well for the Samira. LP trying to do the work. Shanji trying to take out Zika, who's just trying to keep Cream down. Resets are coming in. The Alistair falls, the Varus, the Tristana, the Leona, the Samira. It's all on Zika. But he just can't do it. I say that. Tarzan might be coming back into the fray because he's still alive. He's still able to throw Staplings from over the side. Zika will lose his GA. He will almost certainly fall down and die at this moment. But it's going to be a 4 for 3 in favor of OMG. As Tarzan looks to continue to be here. That's the important thing. Oh, Sanji. Oh, Sanji. Oh, he's thinking about it. He's thinking, he's thinking about, about, about it. Back. Will the sapling be enough? Oh, he had to try and make sure he couldn't get away from this one here. Sanji's taking so, so low. He can't be a part of this. He's burning. Oh, he had to flash away from another sapling. It may be a 1v2, but there's middle agents everywhere. You're losing the inhibitor. You're losing your base. This is OMG won the fight, but they might lose the game. This is Tarzan versus the world. This is the tree of all trees. Yggdrasil, call out his name. Tarzan, I have never seen a carry performance on Maokai like this. Legitimately, only Tarzan could play something like this. Teleports coming back in. Tarzan. It's a tree against the world. They need to kill him. They know they need to kill him. There's going to be the solo for to try and stop him. Double TP onto Tarzan. He is the carry. He is the president. He needs to be stopped. He's and he down. is shot down, felled by the axe of Cassante. And now OMG have themselves a fight. But they, the they can go to TPs. We're coming in. But they've actually gone towards this top side. Zik is going to be joining in as well. This is so chaotic. This is so strange. You tried to go for the Elder, but she may not just lose the game. It's Abel and Cream, but I don't think they're going to be able to try and stop this. Abel hasn't got the damage. Abel hasn't got the wave clear. Cream needs to go in. They're going to try and go for it. There's the cleanse coming out right now. Cream is so low. The S right just to clear out the minions. LP goes down. The turn has been taken. Cream's going to go golden. They're trying to get, get the another severe ultimate. The Nexus is exposed. Scout and Zika have done it. They end the game! LNG, they keep their series streak alive. They lose one game in the series to OMG, but not a second. Absolute heroics by Tarzan. The entirety of that game finally carried over the finish line. That wooden body broken by his solo laners. Teleport up to that top side and you could not ask for a better way to end out this sixth game day. We went the distance in games. We went the distance in that final one as well. That was awesome. My God, what a way to end this game. What a way to end this series. LNG maintain their undefeated streak in series. They go to 4-0. But my Lord, did they have to work for it. OMG, sadly for them. Weren't able to make it six.